Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is Sir Henry Deadman over there. Ooh, and boy. this is what I'm calling the Periodic Parlay, which is the second episode now in our little podcast. So we're doing a podcast together, which will hopefully be live every week. We'll be talking about various things, including news that we've seen during the week, and hopefully some interesting things. And I want to kick it off with a funny comment that I got earlier in the week. Ooh. Which made me laugh for a number of reasons, mostly at myself. So I'm going to read this comment out from Little <laughs> Ghost. And it was, I've been binge, binging all your mouse videos and I found your playlist. And number 22 in the playlist is about pulled pork. And number 28 is about crispy fried chicken. And the one on 16 isn't about mouse comparisons either. And I went and I looked. <laughs> and he was entirely right that I'd accidentally put in some random things <laughs> there was indeed a crispy fried chicken video in the middle of <laughs> mouse video comparisons and That's i did funny. there was also one about lower back pain which i'd left in one of the other ones and the reason for it was i um sometimes go through youtube while using my provoke prawn account and i see a video and i think oh i'll need to watch that later because that looks interesting and so i click watch later but sometimes youtube decides actually it might be more entertaining to put them into a playlist and it tries to put them in a random playlist of a video that I just recently updated and I and I untick the box and remove it but for some reason it still insists that actually it should indeed be in the, in that playlist still so that's how that happened so I had to go through all my playlists and remove a few different ones so there was so if you're interested I really like crispy fried chicken and pulled pork I got big into barbecue in the middle of last year and True. also uh, lower back pain is a problem because I'm old. Oh. Well, I thought that was pretty funny. A pretty funny way to start. And if you see this video and you want your comment featured, please just leave a hilarious comment or join my Discord, which I'll link to. And then you can also send me funny things that you want to talk about. And I also want to do an AMA section in this podcast in the future. So if people have comments and things that they'd like to discuss... Uh, or like to ask me then please let me know the other thing i wanted to talk about is uh yesterday two days ago was the one year anniversary of my gameplay channel so I started a gameplay mm -hmm. channel a year mm -hmm. ago which henry knows because he's no, regularly yes. featured on it it's and me. uh it's now hit 1400 and something that's 1447 i think it was which i thought was pretty good growth now it's not no. super fast and i had someone comment this morning saying that oh there's people out there that have got millions like yes fair enough yeah. but that wasn't the idea this is a gameplay channel so it's mostly just silly gameplay that people aren't actually searching for i did a video which was apparently too long according to this person sharing my insights yeah. in how i did that and the sort of mm -hmm bits behind it and the sort of problems that come with it in terms of shorts and how I haven't got enough monetized watch hours in order to get monetization out of it. Well, I thought it was interesting and I'm pretty pleased because that now means I have three channels which are over a thousand subscribers. So slowly building the provoked prawn empire. <laughs> Those are my small highlights from the week. And now I want to let Henry tell us about his. Well, my you know, highlights, so I don't really have highlights. I mean, you know, I do what I do. Um, I've got, you know, things that I thought we could talk about. If you want to start with those, that'd be nice. Yeah. You do have yeah. a highlight. It's talking to me. I, that is my highlight. It's my I'm playing beacon. Games. It's my beacon, my lighthouse in a storm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so one thing I saw that excited me this morning, um, Meta, you know, Facebook, formerly, uh, Meta Quest, are working with Ardman Animation, and they're making a Wallace and Gromit VR game. Like mm -hmm. an adventure, like an adventure game, but you're a character in the game. So I imagine when you look down, you're going to have little clay hands and things. Look really exciting to me. What's um, that called? It is called uh, Wallace and Gromit. Where are we? Hold on. What do they call it now? Do you have a trailer uh, or anything for it? The grand? No, not yet. It's in the works. Oh, this see. is just like an announcement thing. It's called the Grand Gate uh, Getaway. So it's not out till next year. But um, it's going to be exclusive to MetaQuest. It says MetaQuest 2, and that's his exclusive next year. So does that mean there's not going to be a MetaQuest 3? Here it is year? on Variety. So there we go, that's the one. Well, so, yeah, MetaQuest 2. Uh, well, the next Oculus Quest or MetaQuest, as it's known, has mm -hmm. been rumoured for quite some time. But mm -hmm. when we'll but see this it. Is, it'll be, 
it'll be on Meta and Two in next year. So maybe there's yeah. maybe there's going to be a little bit longer. Maybe they wait till Christmas next year. But um, they're working with um, the Ardman team and the writers and all the voice actors. Well, not all the voice actors because one of them died. But um, as best they can do, I suppose. But it looks good. Apparently, it's going to be like you know full three D, full claymation. It's going to be very trippy to be in, but I look forward to it because I very much enjoy Wallace and Gromit. Yeah, and quite stuff good. In, Ardman stuff in general is pretty good, but um, that really excited me. To be fair. So I that think was that would actually morning. work quite well because, like, cartoony mm. VR games or sort of mm. animated ones that are somehow more believable. Yeah. Played the Rick and Morty one, and there was another yeah, that, one that was like that. That looked a bit claymation, didn't it? Kind of. It was kind of. There was a texture to the characters. It wasn't just like cell shaded or anything, wasn't it? It was it's just easier to forgive when there's mm. not any issues if that makes sense as in yeah. you're not looking for graphical problems and going well that doesn't look very uh, real yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one, you're just yeah. enjoying the various different colours and hilarity of it I think so yeah, yes. yeah exciting mm-hmm. And uh, so we're talking about other things now another thing yeah. I've been doing one of the things I've been doing this week is I've been making a keyboard which oh. you can see here Ooh, which is a, it's a royal clutch oh. keyboard now this keyboard was sent and i'll obviously be doing a video on this at some point <laughs> and it's a full key full-size keyboard which i actually have grown out of liking full-size keyboards <laughs> but this is a reasonably affordable keyboard i think it's the rk98 if I'm, memory serves 96 rk96 96. <laughs> and royal clutch if you don't know already are like quite cheap keyboards but they offer a really nice um, design. This has hot swappable switches, but it also sounds great. Mm. It's not really loud. It's got some really nice key sounds to it. Mm. I think people are going to lap it up, so that's really cool. And I like the Nez look to it as well. Yeah, they sent a different keycap, so it came with mm-hmm. all white keycaps, which was actually Blech. quite a bit in, intense. Mm. <laughs> uh, I like yeah. white stuff generally, but this is really white, <laughs> and <laughs> under lighting it looks incredibly bright. Yeah. Um, but they also sent these lava keycaps, which I've swapped mm-hmm. out for, and I changed mm-hmm. the key switches. So I'll hopefully be editing that video next week, and that will go up, and mm-hmm. that should be interesting. But the other nice. thing of excitement, which is a bit more exciting, mm-hmm. which I've done a video on, which will go out tomorrow, is uh, Antlion. I think I might have told you about this, which is the mod mic. So there's a microphone, oh, yeah. which is essentially a wireless clip-on mic, and uh, here it is here. And this is £139, which is a lot of money for a microphone. Mm. But the idea is it has a magnet system on it, and you can then just clip it on to headphones. So you can see that I've got a magnet on the side here, and you can just snap that mic on when you want to. And it's really good quality as well. It's broadcast quality, and it does it captures in a really impressive way. It's a lot of money, and I was trying to think... I've done a video on it, and I do think it's worth it, because if you had headphones that you really like but you don't have a microphone, then it obviously mm. makes sense. If you don't want to purchase a standalone microphone, because I was yeah. thinking about the cost, like justifying the cost of this is quite expensive. But if you bought the quadcast, like you've got, for example, that, that yeah. was, what, £89? About that, yeah. And then if you throw a boom arm into that, you probably look, depend- unless you cheap out. <laughs> if you've got a cheap <laughs> boom arm, then you're probably looking at 100 total, I suppose. But if you went for a fancier one, mm. you might end up paying the same as what you would for this. But obviously, you're then taking up space on your desk yeah. and extra room, whereas that mic... And the thing about it as well is it comes with two magnets, so you can okay. actually put it on two different headsets. So I've tested it on this, which is the Cloud Alphas from HyperX. I also put it on a Bear Dynamic headset that I was trying out. So I thought the fact that you can switch between them is really cool and it gives a bit more flexibility to it. Also, the capture quality is fantastic. So I tested and the capture quality between the microphone that comes with this headset standard and the wireless mm-hmm. mic is actually a lot better. And that's yeah. funny because this is a wired headset. So yeah. you think the quality would be better on the microphone, but actually it isn't. So that's pretty, pretty mm-hmm. fun. Maybe because it's sharing the same wire space as the hearing and things. Yeah, Sometimes possibly. That might affect it. What's next, Henry? Mm-hmm. What have you got? What's for next? Um, world? Oh, this was in you know the future dystopian world we move into. Uh, Snapchat has a dress up feature that's going to be used for um, AR shopping. So basically, if you look at a pair of shoes, you can go, "Oh, I don't know if I like them or not." That's you open up the AR shop. Yeah, you open up the AR shopping app. 
Yeah, and it superimposes them on your feet. I think I've um, seen something like this before. Yeah, I have. Do you know, I, I, I think remember you can do it with Ray-Ban ago. glasses or something. You can do it with Ray-Bans. And also, um, there's some shops around London where I've heard they've had, like, AR mirrors. So you can you scan the coat on the side of the mirror, and then you stand in front of the mirror, and it superimposes the, it onto you, which is um, cool. That's a pretty. It, it's a pretty cool use of technology, I think. Yeah. One of the things I like when they do it is with uh, glasses, because when mm. you're shopping for spectacles, it's really difficult yeah. to sort of imagine what they'll look like in your face. Oh yeah, especially if and, you're doing it online. And if you're blind, <laughs> even going into a <laughs> shop, I mean, if you're yeah. blind, take your glasses off and put on glasses that don't have your lenses <laughs> in them, and then try and that's look true. at yourself, and you're just like squinting into because uh, uh, yeah, I am no, painfully true, blind. That's true. <laughs> so, well, true. That's true. <laughs> Uh, I'm talking yeah, about being but, blind. Um, the uh, the Verge needs dark mode because this is ridiculously bright. Oh my god! Yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it's uh, every time I look at it, I'm like like I have to turn my screen brightness down. So we're gonna switch but, it back. Um, that's the that's, that's fine. That's the last one from the Verge I've got. Um, so <laughs> it just they happen to have two on the front page of Google. I was like, oh, okay, that looks interesting. But yeah, I thought that was quite cool. I think um, like I know Amazon's got the AR stuff to see if a sofa fits in your room and stuff like that. But um, I just I just like. I like it being used like this more than I do being used for sort of like frivolous little games and things or stuff like that. I'd rather it was used for a proper reason. Um, yeah. And I think that's quite a good reason, actually. I think, I think Ikea good. had something similar about it. Yeah, I Ikea do it as well. Things. I think Ikea sold it to Amazon oh, as well. well. So that's why Amazon do it. You can, there's a weird amount of things you can scan in your front room in Amazon, on Amazon. It's hilarious. But yeah, I thought that was cool. Um, if you like me and you like leaving the house, you can just... <laughs> <laughs> take a picture of your feet and send it to Snapchat and they'll send you that back. That's quite nice. <laughs> so, next thing mm. I want to talk about very briefly mm. is the controversial mm. purchase of no, Twitter. Oh, that may or may not take place. By Elon Musk. Uh, which, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I, I, it worries me that it goes on about free speech so much because we all know that free speech can be a problem sometimes. <laughs> I was thinking about this this mm. morning, like whether... Uh, the CIA and MI6 and other people are concerned about the fact that he's going to open it up to more people because if you think about everyone having the freedom to talk about it obviously mm. there's the chance for people to instigate a lot of hate and dangerous things yeah I mean more. this is the thing like freedom of speech doesn't mean freedom from consequence though so yeah you can say what you like but don't be surprised when people tell you off and have a go you and complain to the police if you're saying it yeah. and if you're doing something dangerous online you're going to suffer the repercussions it's not that you're free from the consequence of your actions, you can do whatever action you like, but you will, you know, there will be consequences, but people seem to forget the middle part of that. So, yeah, there can still be a I lot of instigation of hate and things, though. Uh, yeah, that, that's the thing. Like, I mean, he said, like, he'll make it easier to shut down bots and things, and it'll work on the code a bit better, apparently, something like that. But I don't know what that means. Yeah, I, think... I don't know. I don't know. I mean, let's be honest, like, Tesla's a hit and miss sometimes when they come out of factory if they're going to be fantastic or if they're going to be terrible. Um, I don't know. He, he, I mean, it's not like he's doing it himself, though, is it? I suppose like he's never done anything himself. He just buys a company and puts other people into place and does what he does. Like he, he's not, he's not out there manufacturing electric cars himself or building rockets in his garage, is he? He's, he's just buying the companies to facilitate that process. So I don't, you know, he's smart, but he's not a genius. So I don't know. We we'll have to see how it goes. No. But. I watched I don't know if his happen. Netflix series, or not his, but I watched oh, the yeah. Netflix series. You see it about going back to space. Yes. That was pretty good watching, actually. I didn't. Yeah, uh, I haven't watched that about, yet. Oh, well, I'd recommend looking at it. I know you don't like it. Okay. Isn't, it isn't like a fluff piece about Elon Musk. It's more about. That's what I worried about because he was on the front page. I was like, mm, is it going to be just no, like. This no, is I what don't Elon think so. Thinks, but... No, it's more okay. about just the journey back into space and potential to okay. get into Mars and stuff like that and how NASA's dialed it back more. Yeah. And without SpaceX and those guys, it would be a lot more difficult mm. for NASA to get out there and do stuff now. So I thought that was pretty yeah. interesting, actually. I didn't realise how much NASA had dialed things back in the last oh, few years. yeah, they, they did nothing originally. Yeah, they've not done anything for a long time. Because of... I know so they're kind of all well, reliant on Russian rockets till recently. So um, Yeah, which is all now they've, now they've got their own rockets, um, and they're reusable. Um, it should be better. So hopefully, but I mean, even the Chinese are going mental now. Like They sent that thing to the moon, didn't they? Um, the other side of the moon, and then they've got loads of satellites up and stuff. And even India's got satellites now, which is 
mad. So there was a story about China having a, a special machine that cleans up space debris. Do you remember that? Oh uh, yeah, and like it was the, like Moonraker story. Yeah, like. <laughs> yeah, it's just like a big robot with a snappy mouth going along. Like, wacka, 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 wacka. Uh, I love it. That was funny. I love it. But, uh, I know. see another story in your timeline. Oh yes, uh, is this and called Duty? Yes, yes. I was yeah, just over that. Uh, that this is actually one. on a dark website, so that'd be refreshing. It is on a dark <laughs> website. Yay, game rant. Um, <laughs> yeah. So their new anti, the new anti cheat system from um, Ricochet makes everyone invisible to cheaters, which I think is hilarious. So they join the game, and they can't see people, they can't hear people, and they can't detect people. So if someone's cheating, you'll know because they'll just be like, not they'll just get murdered every ten seconds and <laughs> won't have any chance of finding people. And also, you know, people that are streaming might get called out as well, which is quite good. Yeah, there's a tweet you from people... there. You may have seen this in a yeah. while. Cheaters find themselves unable to see opposing players, characters, bullets, yeah. and even sound <laughs> from illegitimate players will be undetected. <laughs> That's, great, That's pretty yeah. funny. Imagine you'd play. Is... I'd seen something else about this or mm. another thing they were trying where they were putting like fake um, characters in the world that only cheaters oh, yeah. could see. So they were shooting yeah. at like dummies or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, weird. And, it puts them, and then I know there was one time where they tried to put them all in the same lobby. So if it detected you were cheating, you all ended up in the same lobby. And everyone was just getting annoyed because they're all killing each other and badly. There's <laughs> just cheaters versus cheaters at one point, but then it failed apparently. But that was quite good to watch at one point. That's but crazy. yeah, that's cool. That's a good. I uh, like that kind of anti-cheat where people don't know. I'd rather they because if you block them, they just try never ways. But if you're um if you're doing it, you're making them angry and they don't know why, then they're going to get frustrated and they're going to leave, aren't they? So good, yeah. good boo cheaters. Boo, boo cheaters. Boo cheaters down with this sort boo of thing. Cheaters. But yeah. on, also on an awesome game front, which is uh, from Ready or Not, which is one of my favourite mm -hmm. games at the moment, which is a lot of fun mm -hmm. to play. And a small plug, we do play this on the Pews channel, so if you're not subscribed yeah, to that already, come and check that out. Plays a strong word. But yeah. Maybe we'll be doing that later. Yeah, I got told we weren't Ooh. playing it right, actually. <laughs> I'm, not playing it. I'm not playing it right. Someone sorry, said I'm you're not, not doing it right. I'm not, I'm not a member of the police force. I don't know how to clear a room. Well, you <laughs> meant to, yeah, you meant to be doing it properly. You meant to put the cameras <laughs> under the doors and check and then flashbang the room. And, you know. But it's not fun. Yeah. I want to you I mean, know, there is some blast wild in a room and tell them to surrender. <laughs> Someone else said they'd assigned... Uh, the shout to surrender to their aim down sight button as well <gasps> That's which, is, clever. which is kind of what i used to do with cuisine where you put the mark button to the aim down sight. oh yeah i remember that god but then you end up doing the wrong thing and <laughs> yeah but you could i <laughs> mean it makes fun. sense makes some sense it anyway so sense. Yeah. these guys are regularly adding a lot of updates to this mm -hmm. game which i love mm -hmm. and uh, uh probably about a month or so ago they made it so that the terrorists or criminals had knives and would charge at you with a knife <laughs> yeah. which has been terrifying but hilarious and brilliant and now there's got a load of other updates coming and one of them is uh, somewhere on here uh suspects we use cover and also have hiding places so halfway down there it says suspect hiding places suspects will hide from the player in a variety of places from inside closets to under beds <laughs> which is just going to be bonkers. Uh, You'll end up with some knife-wielding suspects hiding under a bed, jumping out at you and, like, stabbing you to death. No, they'll cut your tennis tendon and you'll just fall down a bit and move. That's terrifying. Yeah, so that's going to be great. What's the other thing? I saw something else silly out of this as well. Oh, um, they're going to have body armor as well as in the list somewhere, I think. Oh, yeah. Which is also going to make... We've seen some... Um, we've, we've seen, seen some. people dressed as police before, but they haven't had body armor, like effectively in the game they've had the model of it but they haven't actually had the resistance yeah it's probably yeah. so but there's also a load of new weapons and they just keep updating mm. I, I mean they do bi-weekly updates where they talk about what they're doing yeah. but then they also seem to be rolling out the updates like super fast as well which is mm. really exciting i'm really loving that game yeah and they also like you'll have a trial map one month and the next month it'll be more rendered and ready to go which is nice instead of like because you load in it's kind of all blocky like time splitters used to be and then it's um, a bit better so I yeah. like it yeah it's really good stuff Picasso mm. I like it Picasso oh it's me isn't it what are we looking at Shit um, break, this yeah. one's exciting uh, no Chip and, Chip and Dale do you remember Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers uh, yeah from oh, Disney it's another bright site oof it is another right yeah sorry yeah um, so they've got they've got a new film coming out it's in a trailer May. should we put the trailer on we could do if you're allowed to play the trailer 
Um, it's basically you remember Who Framed Roger Rabbit? It's exactly like that. What's the like it's like real world and animation, but obviously because it's Disney, it's a combination of old fashioned Disney oh, and yeah. Marvel stuff. and sort of Pixar, and they kind of. So it's um, Andy Samberg and John Mulaney a Chippendale, oh. which which is awesome. Um, so that I, I'm just looking forward to this. It feels it's really like fourth wall breaking, and like they go back and visit old Disney characters. There's like a 40 year old Peter Pan in it who's like on the rocks, um, which is pretty mad. Um, but it looks really good, and <laughs> I'm quite excited for this because this is like. It's kind of what I want from Disney. Like I want them to make these kind of cool shows like oh, this. Some but, mix um, of visuals. Yeah, isn't it? So it kind of they start off kind of originally cell shaded and they kind of end up 3D rendered. And um I like it. I like the look of it. It looks fun. It looks hilarious. Um so it's not out yet, but it's out like end of May probably. Um but the adverts have been floating around recently. So I quite look at that. I've you know, I like the Roger Rabbit style stuff. And this is just full of extra Disney references and characters, and it's like a sort of murder mystery kind of thing, or like a detective show, like Chip and Dale used to be. Um, <laughs> I'm excited for it. Nice. I like it. It's good. Looks good. Nice. Uh, here's another highlight to my week. Uh-huh. Can you put Reddit into dark mode? <laughs> I don't even. Uh, I'm sure there I must do be. have it on. I have it in dark mode on my phone, but I don't know how you do it in real life. Anyway, let's zoom in a bit. So somebody had posted on reddit uh, uh corsair subreddit about uh-huh. how whether they could whether you could put three extra fans on the 5000d airflow uh-huh. and i just it some reason when you join subreddits you ever if, i don't know if you get this but every so now and then you get like a notification pops up and it says like oh this person's posted this so i just uh-huh. went into it out of curiosity and i was like yes you can put those three fans on top of there because yeah. i did it in my video and here's the video <laughs> and then i just got loads of comments from people <laughs> Saying like uh, this guy here, for example, I loved your detailed videos. You're responsible for getting the 5000D in the first place. Your videos oh. are fantastic, and I really nice. wasn't expecting this sort of engagement from Reddit. Cause, yeah, I mean, I haven't really had anything like that apart from when I was no. s- streaming and doing cuisine videos. A lot of people would comment mm. then, but and then there's even one down here. Oh snap! The broad himself, <laughs> your videos rock, and I just got loads of them. To the point that oh. one person shared a link with me, which was in yeah. one of the chats. Actually, I better not share it because he might not want uh, it on the internet. But um, yeah. it was basically pictures of his build, which was inspired yeah. by me. It was all, all these Corsair yeah. parts and then his build process for it. And it was yeah. a very nice setup, to be fair. A nice desk and a nice sort of footrest underneath the desk and some nice lighting and a uh, like a map of the world as his mouse map. It was really nice. <laughs> but it was really nice to just have all this feedback from people mm-hmm. that I haven't spoken to before or I didn't know of, yeah. just like appreciating yeah. what I've been doing. And no, that's good. Like a feedback from people, so that's mm-hmm. nice, pleasant. That is nice. And then Corsair will say it on their Reddit and go, hmm, we should give him things. Yeah, well, apparently Corsair don't actually reply to this very much. Although they do exist, I can see that I, some of them I, are there. I, I imagine they live in it to moderate it a bit, because if something went wrong, they'd be there to deal with it. So, but I did share it with them, so because <laughs> I thought it was funny, <laughs> <laughs> I was quite pleased with myself. I mean, it's not yet. I've got sixteen uh, upvotes. Don't know if you know, but um, I've got some Yeah, I've got a that's funny. If you're listening to this, by the way, I do have a subreddit that was set up by Beast of Bunny. So you want to check he it does. out and follow, you can see posts <laughs> on there. And then you get to see oh, it. Gosh. It does <laughs> automatically. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> no, it is no, perfectly safe for work. Perfectly apart from safe. maybe some of the gameplay videos, but it shares gameplay no. videos and my main videos. So, yeah. And also join up on the Discord and you'll see when I'm posting new stuff in case you miss it. Mm-hmm. What's next, Henry? What have you got to talk uh, about? Sky News. Ba, 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 ba. As we news. all know, I enjoy my futuristic cars like we do. Um, having an electric car like I does. Um, apparently, according to the Highway Commission, the Department for Transport, if you have a self-driving car and your self-driving car crashes into someone, it's not your fault. It's the insurer's fault, is what they're going to say. Because I was having I was having this conversation the other day with my parents. I was like, "What happens?" Because if like, because I watched a video where someone was doing the self-driving with a Tesla. And they got it to reverse out of a car park and come towards them. But 
it went through a um a stop sign to go through the car park because there was no traffic. So the police pulled up behind it because they saw it not stop and just pull through. And pull and they got out and went to the driver's side and the two people standing on the road going, Yeah, there's no one driving it, I called it over. And they, neither of them could work out who was it who was at fault. Because the police were like, Well, it's your car, so you're at fault. You're, yeah, but I weren't driving. And they, and they didn't know what to do. So eventually they dropped it. And I thought, that's an interesting quandary. It's like if you've got if you're behind the wheel and it's driving and self-driving, sure it's your fault. But according to the British um Department for Transport, they're gonna make it the um insurer's problem if your self-driving tar crashes. <laughs> um, so I imagine if you have a car with self-driving it's going to cost you a hell of a lot to insure um, mm. th- this has only come up because I know Teslas have started to introduce it and I know VW I know VW are testing their self-driving but VW are also testing self-driving for cars that don't have steering wheels so if you don't have a steering wheel in your car then sure it must be the car's fault mm. but I would find it weird that if I'm sat behind the car of a wheel and I'm watching TV and not paying attention to what the vehicle's doing, and it suddenly plows into a school for the children, like, surely I should have some blame in that. If I'm just, you know, I'm just going to work, it's not my fault, officer, I wasn't driving. So, like, well, you're in the driver's seat, and you could have stopped the vehicle any time. So it's a bit of a weird one, but I thought that was an interesting development in um, the future of cars, because eventually, like, if you've got a self-driving car, do you need a driver's license? Like, if you can't drive the vehicle, can you just slam... Could, could, like, could you just chuck your kids in the car and tell it to go to school and then tell it to come home? Like, would that be a thing? Like, you don't know, do you? Like, it's a weird thought. Um, living your best life. Living Send your best life. I mean, like... And trust I mean, if it's, if, if it's, like, if it's like a Johnny cab, you know, then sure, certainly. Like, it's that thing's fault when it crashes. But um, I found that interesting when I saw that. I was like, what? That can't be real. But apparently it is. Apparently the... Transport, transit part of the transport has gone. Nope, not your problem. Mad. So that's interesting. So it's interesting. And I thought, I don't yeah. know if people that watch you have, you know, interesting cars, but oh yeah, let us I know. thought it would be worth. Yeah, let us know because obviously, if you want to talk about electric cars? I am in for that. He loves um, it because he's got one. I do love it. I'm rubbing it in my face because I'm still using steam power. If you like him? <laughs> I've got a horse and cart. <laughs> got a horse and cart. Yeah. No. <laughs> So the other other news from this week, which mm-hmm, I'm excited mm-hmm, about, mm-hmm. but Henry is probably indifferent to, is uh, Dying Light now has Game Plus. Oh mode. yeah, okay, yeah. What's oh that yeah, I'm bored already. I don't know what that means. What does Game Plus, <laughs> does game plus mean? So Game Plus, after finishing the game once, you can replay it again, <laughs> except it has modified parameters, uh, so it has new experience. The player can go through the story with revitalized mechanisms. These include new enemy behaviors. More difficult encounters, new objects, okay. extra inhibitors, which is pretty cool because that means you can rank up your levels quicker. I guess they'll have to mm. l- add more levels to the parkour well, and the... stamina ones. So mm, add to well, that. If the bosses are harder, then the levels will be higher. So yeah. you'll and start off with like level three bosses and then move other, up, I suppose. Other changes. So there's 30 new inhibitors. If I remember correctly, there's like 200 and something because I collected them all. Oh, okay. so I hope that doesn't ruin any of my achievements. But there's also <laughs> going to be new objectives, a new yeah. distribution of enemies. Yeah. So you get more dangerous enemies at night again. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. And then a new legendary weapon tier. <laughs> And the enemy difficulty is going to scale with the player, which actually I wasn't a fan of, but I suppose if you played through the game once, that's fine. Because I really yeah. enjoyed going back and being like really high level and going back to the original yeah. areas and bashing up the really easy <laughs> zombies. Yeah, but then when funny, you complete yeah. the game, it sets all the zombies to the same level as you. And I think that was level eight. Oh, and okay. so all the zombies were level eight, and it was incredibly hard to deal mm-hmm. with them. And it was, yeah. So New Game Plus sounds cool. Mm-hmm. I wonder if you can take all your abilities in or if you had to start from scratch. Because I, I think my I you imagine can... you'd have to start from scratch. It's a bit like um, yeah, that's Call less of Prestige. Appealing. And... Less yeah, appealing it's like, to call, me. like the um, Prestige from Call of Duty and it kind of wiped everything you start again. Mm. So Maybe. just with a shiny badge. Oh. So what's next? Well, oh, Shipbreaker? Uh, uh, no, Rayban. Rayban. So okay. we were talking about Rayban. We've talked about Meta. And I didn't know they did this, but they do meta sunglasses. Yes. The um, covered cameras. This, isn't, this um, is not new, I, but... This is not new, but I've only just seen it, so I thought I'd check, because it's... You used to sit down with everything. I know, I usually am. And to be fair, I knew Snapchat had made glasses. Um, that They never seem to go anywhere. 
but it's quite amazing that they've got one. Um, fancy animations on the website. I know, right? Isn't it? <laughs> but I mean, to be fair though, the specs are a bit crap. It's a dual five megapixel camera that, and it stitches it together. So it's, and if you film at 30 FPS, which I realise is the frame rate of the human eye, uh, but it, um, I don't know, the tech seems a bit lacking to me, but, High you know. resolution photos, 2592 by 1944, yeah, it's not. Yeah. And the it's video great, quality is, is 1184 by 1184. 11, 12, yeah, 30 FPS. It's not even, I'm not square, yeah. I suppose it's <laughs> No, so it's short. kind of, it's kind of like, Odd, it? It'd be um, ideal. But... See, I was actually talking about something like this. I think I was talking about mm. the snap ones with a friend <laughs> who doesn't use them. And I was thinking it would actually be ideal for me because if you think about it, yeah. if you want to do hands-free portrait style video yeah. capture that you can then share yeah. on YouTube or on Instagram or wherever, then you've got a... <laughs> Oh God, I just want to pause for a minute to talk about the irony of this. So we were on this screen and it was really distractive and I thought this is going to be really distractive for the audience. So I'm just going to scroll over here and then it says, never break your rhythm. <laughs> I was just <laughs> thinking how funny it was because it was breaking my rhythm. Uh, <laughs> anyway, okay. so you've got to capture this square video mm. and look and post that stuff really easily. Yeah. Whereas if I capture square video or try and capture video on my cameras, they're usually 16 by nine. So then I have to edit it down to be in portrait format. Yeah. So actually um, having these could be useful. Although I don't yeah, think it, I can justify the cost because obviously when you no, start throwing in prescription God, lenses, God. they end up being a lot of oh money, I bet. Yeah, they do do prescription lenses. Um, you can available as non-corrective and prescription lenses. Um, I'm not sure how much they are actually. Um, it's hard to get past all the scrolling animations to and get to the price. Prescription lenses, cinema oh, vision, um, two hundred ninety-nine pound flat rate for the for the main one. So that plus prescription lenses, so maybe three ninety-nine, probably. If that's a right, how much prescription lenses cost? Really. Five hundred and eighty-two, wow. twelve five hundred and twenty-eight pounds sterling. If you want prescription <laughs> lenses in there as well. 300 quid for... Oh, my God. Yes, yeah, 300 really... quid just for the... Oh, wait. Yes, 300 <laughs> just quid just for that, but it's 500 quid total for the lenses as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the, the glasses themselves yeah. look like 229 or something, and then yeah. you whap on the, <laughs> the lenses too. You can't quite see it because your face <laughs> is hiding it, but behind there it yeah, says no, 528 yeah. at the bottom. Oh, okay. <laughs> if I add yeah. it to bag, you might be able to see that. I'll duck. I'll duck. But yeah, I, yeah, I thought, yeah, I thought for POV stuff, these would be really good. But um, it still surprised me because we're not too far away from when Google Glass came out and everyone lost their mind about private, you know, freedom to privacy and what if they're recording you when you don't know they're recording you. And then that went away and then Ray-Ban come along and go, we've hidden these literally into the frame of the glasses. Yeah. And there's no indicator when you're recording, as far as I, I think can tell. That, I think there is. I think if you look at it, it actually has like a light. Oh, okay. That's good then. Um, I, I think suppose that was probably the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, can, I don't know. I, I see the, the animation about like the the sound and things, but um, pause your song, take a video, because you, you can talk shop, to though. it. That's fine. You can talk to it as well. Um, it's got voice control, which is great. So you can go, you can go, meta, record, which is. <laughs> what? I don't know, you have to shout meta instead of Facebook. Um, no, sorry, I was laughing at the website. It wasn't loaded anymore. It was oh, saying this, right. this can only be loaded in portrait mode. <laughs> Funny. So it's um, got a little light. Look, there you go. It even shows you it lighting up. So uh, if you scroll, it, look, you see it comes I on. Mean, I don't know, sure. how, don't know how visible yeah, that'll be. No, but if, yeah, that's what I mean. if you don't know what it is, and if you've got the sun in your face, and you've got the sunglasses mode, you're just going to think it's that reflection. But yeah, I just I find it odd. Let's say, you know, a little while ago, people were like, oh, don't let Google do it. It's terrible. But then Ray-Ban come along and they've got their own version. Yeah, but it's not just I, Ray-Ban, I is it? So it's, it's Snap just... as well. And I think there's another yeah, Snapchat, one. Yeah, Snapchat, yeah. Snapchat's really obvious, though. Um, it's got massive that. lenses in the arm boom. And they're sort of bright yellow. And I think it plays a tune when it starts up. So you know what's going on. But it is expensive, um, obviously, because it's Ray-Ban. And Ray-Bans are just expensive sometimes for... I'm not sure I'm keen on this design. I like other Ray-Bans better. But, um, it's the classic you've got design. You've got I think the advantage that they've got is because uh, Ray-Bans are kind of chunky anyway, so they look yeah. up, it won't stand yeah. out that much. True. So it's interesting but, um, that you can get them in different it... colours. Mm -hmm. I thought it was cool. Um, timeless colour combinations. That one's horrible. Oh, it's like a gold. Oof. 
I like blue though. Yeah. Blue's cool. Blue's good. Blue's good. I like blue. So there we go. Yeah, we have mixed I feelings on cool. this. I think it would be yeah. really useful for me, <laughs> but I'm no, not paying I, I 500 pounds for I, them. <laughs> I do think it's useful, um, but it is expensive. Um, but also, I'm just amazed that no one complained about it when they really went mad about. Googles. You are so. angry about this. Maybe you should take the hashtag Rayban stories and voice your opinions and say why is no one complaining so. about so it? Bring back Google Glass. Bring back Google Glass. I did want Google Glass. I really did. I thought that was really useful. And that was really obvious what you were doing as well, because it's like, you know, a big bit of perspex on the side of your face. It's a bit clear what's happening, but <laughs> maybe they'll maybe Google will bring them back soon. Who knows? Luggage says that the auto closed captions can't cope with either of our voices. <laughs> Oh, that's because we're very, very English, and it doesn't like English people. No, we'll get we'll get Beast of Bunny to do the closed captions properly. Yeah, she'll do it. She'll love it. Watch she'll be the recording. Know. Hold on, let me do one for her. a water bottle. <laughs> um, there we are. That, that's just for Bunny because she loves that phrase. You so. want me? You want me? Yeah. Right. So my turn uh-huh. to talk now. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Enjoy right. yourself. I want to out. talk. So I was uh-huh. doing a bit of work around the best PC game remasters. I asked for your input on this, didn't I? And I wanted to talk about PC game remasters for a bit because Mm -hmm. I think they're terrible. (laughs) No. (laughs) So um, let's get get it on. We haven't got anything to show, so let's have have a look at my face (laughs) as I talk about how I... I'm not... So I love the idea of them. I want to talk about, first of all, my experience with PC Game Remaster just yesterday. <laughs> so I was watching oh, yeah. uh, Jack Frags, I think it was, playing mm-hmm. the remaster of uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, which is COD 4, the original yep. one from whenever that was. Yeah. But they re-released it in 2018, I believe. Yeah. And he was playing it at 4K. I'm pretty sure it was Jack Frags. He was playing it at 4K and it looked brilliant. And it just gave me happy feelings of because COD Four was like I I loved the original CODs the World War Two ones they just that, they were so good that was, back that when was COD and Medal of Honor were just fighting it out each year or whenever yeah and they were both delivering fantastic shooters and that was like the beginning of proper shooters yeah. and and then COD Four came along and obviously it went to Modern Warfare and everyone was really excited but the single player was fantastic and I really loved like that mission all gillied up. And that was mm-hmm. the one that he was doing because when you sneak out of the grass and you're like wandering off sniping and oh, it was brilliant. And I thought, I want it. So yesterday through the pyramid scheme, scheme that is Quidco, I got some money back <laughs> for all the cash back. Henry thinks Quidco is a uh, it's a pyramid scheme, by the way, which is it's not. It's just a cashback no, website where you can make money when not. you buy buy stuff. This this, money for this video is not sponsored by Quidco. No, Unfortunately, no. I don't no. have an affiliate link. But anyway, I got the money back from them, so I thought I'll treat myself. So I bur- I purchased uh, Modern Warfare Remastered on Steam for the insane amount of thirty four pounds sterling, which is just <laughs> mental considering it came out in twenty eighteen. I've not even paid that much for a new game for so long. And, uh, yeah, it was a hard purchase, but I thought, you know what, it doesn't matter because I've got the money and I, w- I really want to play that I- a game again. And I launched the game and it immediately said to me um, some error, like, out of memory, you might be running out of hard disk space. And I'm like, you what, mate? Because I've got, like, six <laughs> drives and they're definitely not full. <laughs> so I restarted my computer because as you do, turn it off and on again, and it still didn't work and it said the same error and I was so annoyed. Anyway, I googled it and it turns out loads of people have had the problem and there's some solutions that involve booting your PC back into safe mode and then running the game in safe mode and then putting the game into windowed mode and then rebooting your PC back into the... And I was just like, you know what, although I could do that because I know how to do it, that's too much effort, I'm just going to get a refund. (laughs) So I went onto Steam and refunded it and then I went onto Twitter not angrily grumped about it. And yeah, I think that was a... That is one of my experiences of remasters. Now, generally, I, I have found that the remasters that I have played, which is very mm. few, never do the original game justice. And I feel like in the last few years, every company seems to be churning out a remaster. Yeah. And not really doing it properly. There's been some... Uh, Mafia got remastered and they said it was from the ground up and I haven't played it mm. and it has got good reviews so I, I hope it is good and I love the original one and but then there's the GTA trilogy which obviously <laughs> yeah uh, I didn't buy but 
of no, I saw I've, the reviews I've, of. I've I've watched like a twenty minute YouTube video of like remaster fails, and it's just it's insane. It looks worse than the original did. Yeah, like, from memory, and I don't know why, but apparently they rushed it. Um, so it wasn't handled probably... by Rockstar, was it? It was handled by an external well, development uh, company, well, there you yeah, go, then, and they didn't do it properly, and they made a, a balls up of it, which is a real shame. Because everyone was excited for San Andreas, I think. But I really yeah. wanted to play Vice City because Vice yeah, City was my favourite. The Vice 80s well. was the best. And yeah. all the music from that was fantastic. And the era was fantastic. And it had like Scarface references in it and so many yeah. film references. And it was just... Oh, absolutely. And I thought, I, when I heard that it was being launched, I was like, I need that in my life. But then I saw all the reviews. and I think yeah. the price of it, I think it was like £60 as well for the, when it launched. And I thought, oh, that's too yeah, much. I'll have to right, wait yeah. until it comes down. The idea of paying price like that for a game that you've already played and might not be <laughs> might not be that great because it probably has the same wonky gameplay that it used to have, which was fine 10, 20 years ago, or whatever, however long ago it was. This, this is but we're just you, 4K you graphics. Forget, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you forget how like things have moved on in yeah. the base level, just like yeah. movement systems and being able to jump out of the way of things. And not having that in a game that you go back to, you're like, oh my One god! One of the original inspired. GTAs, you couldn't swim. I don't know. Whether it was, yeah, I don't know whether you uh, could in three, GTA. Oh. No, three in Vice City, you couldn't swim because I remember it being a big thing for San Andreas. Mm, yeah, there. So um, imagine going back yeah. and we're like, this is this looks great, but then you drown. Yeah. <laughs> it's like what? Yeah. So I that's want... sad, but mm. in other news, there's no trailer mm. for it yet, unfortunately, because I have to be able to show it. But um, Remedy Entertainment have signed a deal to redo the original Max Payne game. So Max Payne and Max Payne 2 are getting remastered. And those nice. games, oh, let me tell you. And I have never time. seen a bad game from Remedy Entertainment because they did Max mm. Payne, Alan Wake, Control and Quantum cool, Break, yeah. which were all fantastic games and really well crafted and really well polished. And Max Payne is like one of my top games ever, I think, because it had that noir comic book style thing to it. It had a really sort of dark feel to it. It was probably one of the first games to do bullet time, and it was around the era when The Matrix was making bullet time a big deal, and then suddenly it was in gaming. And it just it sticks with me. I remember like there was a crying baby on one of the levels, and it was really creepy because you were like, obviously it was all drugged up. Did you play the Max Payne games? I think I have a bit, yeah. I think I remember an old demo disc from years ago. Oh, maybe it was um, a long... I don't want to look up I've when it was. I've definitely, I've definitely played a level. I'm going to have to do and it. And I think it was a very long time ago. It was like 2142 era. Oh, Jesus sense. Christ. Max Payne was originally released in 2001. <laughs> oh, 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 my goodness. Ago. That is... And then Max Payne 3, which was a good addition to the series, but I think that wasn't done by Remedy. I think they sold the rights to Rockstar or something. They did, yeah. And Max Payne 3 was done, and it wasn't quite as good. It was still good, but it didn't have the same sort of dark... So the original Max Payne had a real dark vibe to it. Everything was dark, and it sort of had this Mm. really sort of eerie underworld vibe to it, and it was so good. And I think the third one didn't quite hit it, but it was... I just, I'm, I'm excited to see these, but I'm always, I always think like I'm going to be disappointed. I feel like I'm yeah, disappointed. I mean, it, it I don't. Is possible. Like, like when they do like really old games, like the remaster for um, Con and Conquer was really good, um, because you can have it in original graphics or you can have it in slightly uprendered graphics, um, and that doesn't really look very good um, when you play it again because everything's really tiny. Um, so that looked good. But mm. I think it works better on very old games. Like they did the the Turtles arcade game got remastered a few years ago into HD, and that looked really good. Oh, I think they're doing a but new Turtles game. They are. So I think they're doing, it's got all of it's got all of the Turtle games, isn't it? It's like all of them in one game. So I think it includes the a couple of the random PS2 games, and then the arcade game from the eighties that was off well, the mid nineties, probably. Um, and it was really good. But that looked well. That looked good. I don't know. I'm just trying to find it now. 
keep entertained. I don't hold on literally. Oh, say uh, more stuff. Say more things. Um, yeah. So oh, I, can't say I, I know they're they're working on a re- they're working on a, a ground up remake of um, Time Spurs. I'm excited for that. Oh yeah, you've been excited. For is, that. It's one of my favourite games in the world. Um, I think I've still got all three with my PS3, with my PS2. Um, is that what it is? Oh yeah. So this is Shredder's Revenge. Uh, that's the one. That's the one. That's the one. That's, that's old one. school style. See, that I don't think I, I can't they, play this sort of game anymore because I just love it, proper modern graphics and it's like so old. Yeah, and sometimes fantastic. I like it. Like, there's a lot of games we play that are pixely, which are quite nice. But I don't know. You got to be in the mood for it. But if it's a party game, you got friends around. Um, you just throw it on the TV. That's quite good. But oh, Meaty says I don't know if that counts as a remaster. But Meaty Keyboard says Hitman in VR. Uh, so they've just I done Hitman 3, yeah. and it originally came out on PlayStation and VR, and I think it's come to PC, but I haven't actually tried it yet. I have seen people try, I've seen people messing around with it, and like, you can, because there's no real physics to it, so you can just pick people up and chuck them, yeah. which, is, which is kind of funny. Um, so it looks good, but um, I suppose that falls in the same vein as like, um, what was that Rockstar Detective game in the 20s, in the 30s? L.A. Noir. Oh. L.A. Noir, they did that in VR, didn't they? Um, oh dear. I've just seen that so, Hitman VR on Steam's got negative. Uh, mostly yeah, negative. I don't, I don't know if it, I don't know if it worked very well. I think it's a bit janky. I think they're still working on it. I haven't, VR I haven't looked port, into this. I need to. <laughs> making something non-VR VR is a bit of a bit of a thing. Like you have to work with it being VR from the ground up. Um... Because I know it's a, there's a fast there's a VR mode in Phasmophobia, but it was originally designed as a VR game, and then they un un three D un VR it to make it more playable to begin with. God, sorry, um, audio. And then they started working it. So I'm trying to find a, a video of it. Oh, it's only from wait. Is this right? Uh, yeah, I think this is for PS. Yes. Uh, oh, yes, we are. That's the thing. Uh, simulating. Yeah, so we've got some of it. Uh, oh, that's not a trailer, is it? Nah, no, that's just a, that's a tech demo thing, yeah. I don't know, see, I feel like I get exhausted doing that. Like, I still struggle with momentum in VR sometimes, like moving, it has to really work really well. People say they have vertigo issues a lot in VR, I don't actually. I've seen some clips more recently of people doing it, and it looked like it was going to be really good. Yeah. This is the sort of thing where you really need hand tracking to be properly working. Yeah, that's the thing, it? Somebody was on really... Linus Tech Tips with a gadget they'd created, which was basically like motors on your hands. Mm-hmm. So they had these gloves that would actually give you resistance. So when you went to pick stuff up and be like, you could actually uh, feel it like at the right position. Better. Yeah. Oh, it was okay. a prototype that some bloke had bashed up in his garage or something yeah. rather than a oh, fully yeah. fledged device. But yeah, but, I think you know, either he'll sell it or someone will copy it. So yeah, <laughs> I think this would be oh, this is a bit edgy, isn't it, to be murdering people in virtual reality with uh, <laughs> with a wire? <laughs> so, uh, I mean, yeah, maybe. it's a bit. They've done it I though, know. and I think I suppose you can... you can get your frustration out of it. It'd be quite fun, but. Oh, we're talking about games. Should we have a look at this hard, hard spaceship breaker? Oh, spaceship breaker! Yeah, so it's been in early access for years now, um, but now it's coming out properly. Um, it's quite fun. It's you know, it's like a bit like Red Dwarf. You're kind of working as a little man for a giant corporation. You have to take apart all these spaceships and laser them apart and drag the bits off and do it in a certain time limit and not kill yourself, which is quite cool. I quite enjoyed it. I played it for a little bit. Um, I haven't played it for a while, to be fair. But yeah, you just you go through like you go in ships and you release, cut all the panels out. You find things. I think there's like you can uncover like a mysteries involving certain ships to why they're abandoned and recovered and salvaged as well. Weird. But um, yeah, it's cool. It's fun. You know, it's kind of got that sort of like you know those games where you can just build something. You know, like you just build things like a, a, a farming simulator or something. It's got that kind of relaxingness to it. But then there's also a lot of excitement sometimes because. Things was, can go wrong very quickly. I was if playing this Breath off. Edge game, which I think maybe you bought. Oh, for, uh, yeah. I've been I playing that, that a little bit lately, that. which is really interesting. So you're mm-hmm. stuck in space, but your spaceships crashed, and you've got like 
loads of other people have died in the big wreckage and then you've got to try and work out why and fix things and but you haven't got enough oxygen so you keep going outside yeah. and come and have to rush back in it's like, it's like a comedy isn't it as well isn't it's, it? it's quite good yeah it's quite addictive like, i keep finding yeah, it's crashing on my pc though which is annoying you, oh sorry. i remember like you would um you when you got to the cockpit of one of the ships and you're like we're going to be safe now and you start the ion drive and it takes off and it flies away and just leaves you behind with the steering wheel is that the one? Spoilers, I haven't got that far yet. Um, there must have a lot of work to it. <laughs> you know I don't have any <laughs> as much time to play games as you. But yeah, like, well, I mean, maybe, you can yeah. see all the sort of craziness goes in on it. Mm. Yeah, I think it was kind of a funny game as well as being oh. involved. But yeah, that was good. I enjoyed that when I played it. But it was very short when I played it, so I think they probably added a lot more to it. Oh, okay. Well, I haven't played Which that is... much of it, to be fair. Oh, right. I've just no, been it was, it was only I... like an hour, an hour and a half worth of gameplay, I think. So I think they've oh, improved really? it a lot. Yeah. It was kind of like stage one of the storyline was released when we played. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, so the other thing that I was going to talk about, which kind of mm -hmm. sort of goes along with the remaster chat from earlier, is uh, mm -hmm. Uncharted Legacy of uh, Thieves, which I think is all of the Uncharted games, but on right. PC has been delayed. Oh. So they're delaying uh. it. Now, I don't know how I feel about this because I loved Uncharted and I actually mm -hmm. bought the PlayStation 3, I think, specifically for Uncharted. And okay. then I bought f the PlayStation 4 specifically for the new Uncharted as well because you couldn't get them on PC at that time. But I don't yeah. know if I'd buy them again. However, if I knew they were coming to PC, maybe I wouldn't have bought a PlayStation because <laughs> well, I barely yeah, use my how PlayStation. Long been, how long has it been, though? You know. Bloody ages. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. It's another game that's probably been... When was the original Uncharted game released? This is terrifying when you search for this. When you search for this sort of thing and it tells you 2007. <laughs> Oof, sounds about right. Yeah, a long time ago. Not when the PS3 came out, yeah. Crazy. Mm. Crazy. Anyway, so, I mean, when it's yeah. on sale I might buy it because the Uncharted games... Oh, are... Did you yeah. play them? Uh, vaguely, I'm not my thing. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, it's kind of like Tomb Raider, it's not really me uh, yeah but it's not got a lady in it so you can't get upset he's not misogynistic I like, oh, that, that came out wrong. sounds like what you just said um so henry you know, loves yeah. ladies so, uh, as yeah, long totally, as not totally. Vickies. Vickies. um you yeah, know um i don't know i like i don't know i'm not really fun of playing someone else's adventure so i like it to be me oh yeah so, right I you're in control really you don't like storylines yeah, well, not the storylines. I just don't like storylines where I have to be someone else. That's all. Okay, fair enough. Have we got anything else? I think we've completed all the no, list. No, I'm good, and I can see my camera battery flashing. Um, oh, so oh, we better a good place to stop. We better come to um, an end then. Yeah, yeah. I did well. We've got everything out. It's all good. Yeah, we've had a good chat. Hopefully, it's yeah. been enjoyable for those of you that have been watching. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you'd like to get involved and send me some questions, then drop them in the comments or come onto Discord. Also, if you want to see us engaging in the lovely banter that we have, we will shortly be on my gameplay channel, going live, playing mm -hmm. some games. I don't know what games. we're going to be playing yet. No idea. But come over, click the link, come see, have some fun, have some chats with us. And also, thanks for watching. Say goodnight, Henry. Goodnight, Henry. <laughs>